back to my channel so today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i achieved this unique evil eye hamza hamza i'm not sure which sound the a makes there but this beautiful blue look and so i'm gonna start off by removing my client's previous design um she had this very like optical illusiony drip just funky set that i did record but i had to delete the footage because i was trying to record something else but it may be on my icloud somewhere let's hope fingers crossed one day we'll get it up <laughs> so i'm using the speedy bit from my elegance um a lot of you guys have been asking of course for alternatives because light elegance is a um a licensed only brand um and of course you guys know i'm a licensed nail tech i have access to professional products as i am a professional but i do appreciate and understand there are nail enthusiasts and hobbyists out there who should be doing nails only on themselves and not taking clientele etc because that is not legal okay but i digress <laughs> so um if you are familiar you can use um at wood industries like their mean green bit or their red baron bit would we'll do the trick i've that's what i've used in the majority of my videos at this point especially if you scroll back any over the past five years or so um so those are still absolutely great bits i just have these they're fresh they're new that's what's happening so i use this bit personally for me at about 25 30,000 rpms i am not a fan of using aggressive bits slower and a lot of times using them slower is not helpful uh, because they're aggressive and they have those teeth it's gonna create more friction the slower that it goes so i know it sounds scary but it's going to go through product like butter if you just speed it up some speed it up please i think you're gonna have a good time so my client has a little crack in her nail there we're gonna address that and she it's been a while since i don't i can't remember i like to tell you what happened to the nails as you guys can tell i have somebody keeps me like client blaming and shaming like i'm not i'm telling you guys to help education for education reasons i like to tell you guys what happened so you know it helps with with different things it helps trust me <laughs> so i'm using the cutie patootie bit to help kind of push that epinicium back what we would call in my air quotes the cuticle technically removing the cuticle from the nail plate which is the dead skin that grows on the nail plate and now i'm using this bit again from my elegance if you want a replacement something doesn't look similar but will act similarly is the skiver bit from atwood industries like i said if you're interested in something that'll do a similar job this bit i believe is called the itty bitty bit i believe from my elegance you guys i'm still trying to learn the names and then i'm using this is a crosscut style bit again if you're looking at atwood industries this would be the crosscut bit um, if you're shopping with light elegance, it would be the shaper bit, just so you know. And I'm using this bit to kind of flush out product more and then remove shine from the surface, any that's left, and to make sure all all that pink and black and white was removed from the sidewalls, the edges of the nails, and just yeah, give us a beautiful beautiful be can I talk a beautiful texture on the nail so we have great adhesion. So I went ahead and cleansed the nails, um, cleansed them with acetone or light elegance's um, prep, for their uh, pro cleanser. <laughs> That's what it's called, pro cleanser, not prep. So I'm using light elegance's um, tack, and this is a bonder, a nail bonder that needs to be cured in the LED or UV light. Is it UV compatible? I feel like everything is right. That's old school. Anyways. It's cured in the lamp. <laughs> you can find details, of course, if you're a professional on their website. And now I am using these forms because I'm going to sculpt out these nails that she um, is missing that were broken. And so, did my client fall? 
I don't want to make that up. It just dawned on me. I think that's what she said. Anyways, I am using Light Elegance's Fiber Gel for this. Um, and I'm using the gel polish brush from them as well. And I'm using the Fiber Gel to extend this tip out. This is how I usually sculpt. You guys don't see me sculpt often. But I like to get the tip going. And I like to add a little bit, of course, on the natural nail to make sure we have it attached to the natural nail and actually what's the free edge, the free part that's hanging out there in the world. We use an ideal pink builder, the Jimmy Gel um, ideal pink as a base as well. And I um, just want to show you a clip of me sculpting out just so you know what happened. Um, when I am sculpting, I usually like to have them cure it five, six seconds, take it out the light, kind of pinch it a little bit, just get a cute little C curve, add strength, put it back in the light for the rest of the time, take it back out, and um, go ahead and build the remainder of the nail. Now, she had a little crack right there on her natural nail, and um, I wanted to go ahead and applying fiber gel. Fiber gel literally has fiberglass in it i think the number is about 10 percent of the product is a literal fiberglass you can if you ever seen it in real life you can literally see the little pieces of fiberglass in it um so clear fiberglass is not like as super clear clarity <laughs> if that's something to say and um but it's great for you know having a base to sculpt and for repairs and things of that nature so i applied the um jimmy gel as a base again it's able to be soaked off and i've been appreciating it just you know as a base gel to get something down and for insurance in case you know my client needs to get it removed at least at least at the very base of the nail structure there is something that can be soaked off even though the ideal pink the remainder of the products cannot be as far as the enhancement is concerned at least the part that is touching her natural nail can be so now I am using that Ideal Pink Builder to go ahead and build the actual nail once I get it how I want it because we're going to be doing some fringes. This, um, I went with this. I wasn't mad at it with her skin tone. It is pretty fair. Ideal Pink can work with a lot of skin tones, although it may not be ideal for everyone but I, I think it it went fine she was absolutely happy with it everybody has their opinions on what a good nail bed color is of course so i'm just repeating the same process i'm gonna go ahead and applying that layer of the jimmy gel and um you go ahead and cure this first get that in the light and then we're going to apply a thin layer of the builder gel that i don't think builder and that thin layer we're applying is the slip layer and we're going to go ahead and um leave that wet once we apply it after um we apply that slip layer leave it wet we're going to pick up a bigger bead and with that bigger bead we're going to go ahead and build up the nail this slip layer is very, very helpful with allowing this bigger bead to slip, again with my air quotes, where it needs to go, to slip and slide where it needs to go. So I will go on my uh, weekly rant, my bi-weekly rant of how rough done put up a video. How build a gel is a product that's really easy to work with can be intimidating like i said the problem we have here in america is that we grow up a lot of time as kids of course that's not everybody's story everybody's story different but a lot of us here in america we grew up seeing acrylic in nail shops especially if you're a little girl or a little boy you know whatever and um you know you go to the nail shop with your mom your auntie your grandma your whoever and you see you know acrylic being whipped out and if you're a little girl like me or a little boy, um, you're probably like, oh, I want this done. I love this. It's cool. The smell. You know, at some point it attracts you. At this age, I fear it. That smell of monomer. <laughs> but um, 
you know, it's just something we know and then you see it happen so much, especially if you were able to start getting acrylics at a young age or go to the nail um, so on often. You see it get done, it looks cool, and it is unlike anything you probably ever see day to day as far as like mixing chemicals and them hardening and curing and everything like that. So it is a fascination. It's something we're accustomed to and want to learn. But with Builder Gel, it's so much less. Just It's just so much less. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, just try it. Give it a good try, okay? Get you some, like if you don't have a license and you're interested, get you like some, I think Young Nail sells to the general public now, like their Synergy Gel or IBD's Gel. Um, there's a lot of good brands out there, guys. So definitely give it a try. But anyways, I digress. But so I'm taking a ceramic smooth top bit. Um, this you can find these all different kind of places. I'm using this to debulk any parts of the nail that need to be debulked. And sometimes I feel like going with this bit for finish filing the surface of the nail. Sometimes I'll go just in with like the shaper bit or a cross cut style bit. It depends on how close, once I build the nail up, how close I feel like it is to the final product. If there's some thickness that I want to kind of get down, this will get it down a little bit easier. Um, just depending how I feel like I built the set, it, it kind of depends on what bit I feel like I want to go in. Especially if they're longer nails, I'll usually go in with this bit. It's just because one, it's easier to me with longer nails. Not that these are really long, but um, with shorter nails, they're easier to per easier to perfect, and there's less hassle. So I usually just go in with a shaper bit or the cross cut bit with those. So I'm taking the buffy bit and I'm using it in reverse. I'm right handed. So this is reverse going from left to right. And that is going to kick up any of that skin or potentially any product that's touching um, the live skin. And we're kind of buffing off any dry dead skin. Anything that remains past me buffing it, I'm going to take cuticle nippers to go ahead and nip just the dead skin. Nothing more. Everybody has their opinions on that. That's fine. I'm where I'm licensed. We are to clip dead skin. We're able to do that. Anything more? Talk to your state licensing department about it, okay? Not me. Um, so I am now going in with that shaper bit like I spoke about. And I'm using this to further refine um, the product towards the cuticle area. Especially because we want it nice and flush. We want a beautiful grow out. And also to refine the shaping on the surface, any left, um, any remaining, sorry, lumps and bumps. We're going to go ahead and smooth out with this. And also, as you can see, what this does to the texture of the actual enhancement, it leaves it like buffed with texture. That way we have great adhesion with whatever we're going to do next. If you're going to top coat, if you're going to gel polish, whatever you're having, going, whatever you happen to do you will have a nice roughed up surface to do it. So it's like a three in one situation, cuticle flushness, refining the surface, and then also buffing, getting those texture. So love this step, but sometimes, like I mentioned, I will go in with just this before, you know, not do that white ceramic big first. Depends on the day, on the feel, the flow, the vibes. <laughs> So now I am going to be cleaning the nail off again with that, um, uh, the Pro Cleanser. You can use, I said, I prefer acetone over alcohol. Honestly, that's me though, but whatever. So I'm using a white gel polish and I believe this is, and I might be wrong. I didn't show the camera, but I think it might be, um, Perfect White from Madame Glam. It usually is. Sometimes it isn't. I have tried Magic Gel products lately and their white, their Canadian company, but their white is fantastic. Anyways, just if you're interested, you heard of them, you know about them, check them out. Yeah. And then I'm using this blue holographic-y glitter. Okay. 
Okay, confession. This wasn't the best match. I'm using this as my base for my bling. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the best match. I know. I'm sorry for everybody. It worked out. The tone was a little more... Mm, kind of yellow if you will is lean more aqua but not very obviously you'll see it once i put the crystals on but you know i always like to use a glittery coordinating base when i do bling nails for the most part i kind of ipsed on the coordinating part but it was the best i had so then i'm using um i used some crystal the crystal katana ninja flex glue for that hamza and I wanted to get that started, so that needed to air dry. It's an air dry glue. And that Hamza, you can get from Daily Charm. Use discount code Tabitha with the number 10, Tabitha10. You can find a whole bunch. They have an insane amount of charms on their website, as, as well as other nail art surprises. And you do not need to be licensed at all. They have gel polish. They have like a gel X dupe system, which I love. Just anyways. So... On this bling nail, I am drawing a circle to the best of my degree. To the best of my degree. <laughs> yes, to the best of my degree, I am. That is kind of true. To the best of my ability. I'm drawing a circle because this is going to be our evil eye. And so I am mapping it out because I want to have a black stone for the pupil. The blue for the iris and then we have the white. For the whites of the eyes, I forgot what that's called. It's been a long time since I attended anatomy physiology. Anyways, so I'm kind of doing a guesstimate of where the blue part of the eye will be based on the size crystals that I do have. I'm using like, I believe, turquoise or aqua. I'm not sure. One of those. So I'm putting my black crystal. Now, this is my regret. I should have used jet. I should have used a jet black crystal, a jet black Swarovski crystal for the uh, pupil of the eye. You guys know I'm usually all for graphite. Graphite, graphite is the best black alternative to Swarovski crystal. I agree. Everything is not everything, though. I should have used jet. Uh, I couldn't I actually was looking for them. I couldn't find them until I was doing a random live one night and I accidentally stumbled across them. But I digress. Should have used graphite for this one instance. You know, you never know what you, when you need anything. So we use those. I, like I, you might you might be able to tell by how they look. But um, the blue, like I said, I don't know if it's aqua or turquoise. But then I'm using white opal as the, of course, white of the eye. And then I'm using the um, little bouillon or micro, micro beads, whatever you want to call them. And again, they're from Daily Charm. And I think the size is um, 0.8 millimeters, I believe. They're the second from the smallest. So, yeah, I believe so. I think, yeah. Um, and they're just the gold ones, of course. Again, always you can use the discount code. And I'm just dropping those in. I'm using a crystal gel. And I hate to sound like a broken record, but again, Daily Charms Crystal Gel is amazing. And I'm sorry I'm not showing products in this video. Video, And I'm using an LED lamp to secure the um, product to lock it in place. Because once you get that shape right with that circle or get everything together, you want to lock that in. Because it took time to perfect this. Anyways... I'm going in and sealing, using that crystal gel to seal around this stone. These did not come off. Um, she literally took one off. She didn't tell me why. That's her business, you know what I'm saying? But she said she needed to take one of them off. Okay. So anyways. <laughs> but yeah, they stayed on super good. And then I am just going around. Um, once I gave the little... My little eye motifs all together got them cured we're gonna go in with a crystal gel and i found this to be the easiest way to accomplish this because we're not fitting we're gonna full bling the rest of the nail it's gonna be a full bling nail well it's kind of hard 
to do this concept with traditional glue some people like to use resin or whatever which of course i'm absolutely for not against but there's a time and place for everything and it kind of been difficult to use in this instance for me you know i'm not to stop anybody with their good skills with doing things that i cannot do but i need to kind of see things move them around fit this there just because it's not a simple full bling we're fitting them around this already put together eye design so i needed crystal gel to be able to move things where i wanted them make sure they fit and i especially find um not difficult but a little more tedious to bling uh to full bling um stiletto almond shaped nails just because they come to that point gonna be a little tricky making sure that point still looks pointy it doesn't look bulky but then it still reads as a full blinged out nail so crystal gel seemed best for me in this situation yeah but just make sure you seal them in really well i went ahead and cured these and top coated around it to seal it in um sometimes what i do uh, especially what i've been doing lately is the crystals at the very tip i've been using like a regular resin to secure those just to make sure they have that extra little bit of love and security so definitely that's a little tip. I didn't do that here, but definitely a tip for you. And so I'm just getting these crystals where I want them and making sure I like where they are, making sure I like the silhouette of the nail, making sure it's not too bulked up looking, that it doesn't look like a huge fat nail with the rest of my beautifully shaped almond nails. So yeah. So I'm taking a striper brush this one might be the Poochie's Nails one. I believe that's what it is. And I'm using that white gel polish and just busting out a deep French real quick. And getting that on there. I like to draw. Um, I usually go from the beginning of like the side walls and the free edge. Where that kind of happens. And that's where I usually start the sides of my fringes and then I kind of determine you know the angle and how deep I want them to be when I draw fringes I don't usually show it but I like to turn the hand um where the nail is facing me you know with the palm up and the back of the fingers facing me you guys see me do that before and it helps me get it helps me because I shape the nail that way I apply tips that way certain designs i do that way um certain like 3d acrylic work i do that way it just helps to gather a sense of what's straight and what's not because you can level the palm with the ground with the earth and get a horizontal like baseline if that makes any sense uh, i'm rambling <laughs> so yeah just a little tip you know try that if you're working with clients and see if that helps you any it might not everybody has like i said things that help them things that are not helpful some people are able to execute perfectly straight lines just like this you know i'm just not one of those people i have i need different tools and stuff to be able to get things as close to perfect as possible of course nothing ever is so I am just going back in, making sure. And I, what I'm always considering is how deep this French is in comparison, to, in comparison to the other fingers around it. I mentioned before, it's just like with eyebrows, you want them to look like sisters. If we can get them to look like twins, that's good too. But at least sisters. And sisters with the same parents, okay? <laughs> We're not judging. <laughs> um so i tried this design like a little ombre like a faded like literally like blending the colors together and fading them but mm, i didn't like it because i realized how many layers it would be to perfect it and make it look good um and i didn't want to bulk the nail up that much and then i already drew the french whatever um this set was inspired by like two or three different that this client sent me i don't know who it is if you know who it is out there 
I respect their work. Feel free to tag them. I just don't know. I'm never not trying to, um, you know, give credit to other artists. You guys know that's not my MO. I don't care. Art is inspiration. I take inspiration from anywhere. Anybody, anything. So I just don't know who it is. And I can't really. I don't think I have where she sent it to me to even refer back to it. But if you know who it is, if you know where this design came from. For whatever reason, go ahead and tag them to the other people. So I'm just adding these kind of tricolored, this very, very light, light blue. You probably can in real life more so, but it's almost hard to distinguish from the white, especially on camera. So I'm using this light blue, medium blue and dark blue and just adding different little simple accents to these fringes. Just like this. Not really difficult. But it's cute. It gives a little, like, color, cute color theme. And, yeah. So I'm taking Ellie, um, not Ellie, my bad, Young Nails um, Protein Bond. Letting that air dry. And, but you can also use Ellie's um, tack for this process. I just like to do it on the nail bed, especially when I've been working for a while. And um, just in case my client could have touched anything and added any oils to the nail um enhancement just to make sure we have great adhesion that our top coat doesn't pull if you ever apply top coat and it like separates and pulls away from the cuticle area but like pulls on itself like removes itself from the nail and it's not even this will stop all of that issue so either use like elegance tack and cure it in the light or young nails protein bond and let it air dry at least 10 seconds so I had to wipe this off and I am not sure why I'm figuring it out with, oh, I think there was something. Yeah, I think there was something stuck in there or like an air bubble or something, some kind of inconsistency I wanted to get off and get out. So before I cured it all together, I went ahead, wiped that off, took care of what needed to be taken care of, dusted it off. Applied my protein bond, let it air dry, and then applied my no wipe top coat, whatever happens to be your favorite at the time. There's some really great ones out there. I mean, to be absolutely honest, so please don't box yourself in. I feel like there's one like holy grail of a no wipe top coat. I mean, there might be, but there I've used you know several good ones. Um, the Opry one is good, Joya Me is good. Um, I said there's so many I can name you two right now off the top. But there is. Just trust me, there is. Um, so I'm just continuing with this same little theme of these simple designs. Um, on this one, yeah, I mimicked the French. And just used, again, that light, medium, and dark blue colors. Oh, that's what I never, a sentence I never finished earlier, and I apologize I didn't um, get to show the camera the products much for, I was about to say this episode. I mean, it's an episode, right? <laughs> for this video. And I apologize. Um, I know all the blues were from Madam Glam. And I know one is Take Me to Mykonos. And I think the other is like Fresh Me Up or something like that. If you went to the Madam Glam website and you type in Fresh, it should come up. And the um, lightest one, I'm really not sure what it's called. And I apologize for that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Don't be mad. Um, but yeah, put right now, let's talk about emoji support in the comments. Let's put a little, like, eyeball emoji in the comments right now. And, you know, it shows me that you like what happened. It also helps with, you know, interaction. We're trying to get, you know, bigger, better, build a channel. You know, I, a lot of, and some of you guys are so sweet. You like to tell others, like, it is absolutely free to give tap the thumbs up, you guys. She helps us, and I really am, you know, I, I I love this. I love what I do, and I love to share. You guys can probably tell. Authentically, I do. It's just a coincidence that this YouTube channel has turned into what it is. It was never intentional. It was never 
what I set forth to do. I'm just truly a child of YouTube. And it's fantastic to be on here and to be helping people to the degree that I am. Um, So, yeah, just throw me a thumbs up. Leave a little comment. It always helps with video interaction, which helps my video to be shown on, um, you know, like uh, recommended pages and etc., which helps, you know, more views, everything, more subscribers, more opportunities. So, you know, all that, that's, that's free. That's free. You know, it's a lot of good information on this whole channel for free. Oh, we can do we can do a little free for free. I'll give you a whole bunch of free information. Uh, you give me a little free thumbs up and a free little emoji down below. How about that? Let's shake on it. Let's shake on it with our arms and hands. <laughs> so I went ahead and top coated this nail with my no white. And I'm taking my, I believe for this step, I'm using the Light Elegance's white paint gel. Just because it had a thicker viscosity and would hold to this shape a little better and not run and matter of fact i'm not pretty sure i am 100 percent sure that's what i'm using so le white paint gel you can substitute with another brand paint gel just something that's going to hold its shape so why it's still wet while it is still wet sorry i go ahead and pour on clear acrylic powder and i'm just using like it's called harmony I feel so removed, like, ah, oh, what is acrylic? But I'm using a clear acrylic powder and dumping that on and just tapping off the extra and having her to go ahead and cure that in the light. Then I'm just repeating the same process with these little swirly lines above the little Hamza. Is it Hamza or Hamza? Tell me down below. Um, and this is something my client requested, so I made sure I purchased the charms for her because she really wanted to do this set so i made sure we were all prepared i actually had some other little charms and um like evil eye decals all from um daily charm again if you want theme nails if you want cute nails cute art things either way daily charm i've been shopping at daily charm and i've said this before if you're new here i've been i've been shopping at daily charm before i was even in nail school like, I'm always researching. I need to know what's the best. Who has it? Who has the things? The things I need. I need to make cute nails. I need to... Who has it? I've been shopping at Daily Charm for so long. So, when I recommend them to you, it's from a very genuine place. It's just amazing to be in a position, like, very innocently shopping with them, trying to start my nail career to being in a place now that, you know, I have a little discount code with them and I get a, a little bit of monies, but it's, it's genuine. So I, um, that's it. This is our final look. We went ahead and top coated everything. I mean, top coat those Hamza nails. Once you, um, pour the acrylic on them, you dust them off and cure them. That's it. They're good to go because we first don't forget to apply your no wipe top coat first to get it all top coated. So you're good to go. And I really want to thank you guys for watching. Go ahead. Like I said, leave a little eye emoji. A little hand for Hamza or Hamza, however you pronounce it. Don't forget to thumbs up. Okay. That's our deal. That's our contract. Okay. You thumbs me up. That didn't sound best. You give me a little thumbs up and I'm going to keep pumping out videos. How about that? All right, you guys. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.